All right. Let me make sure this thing is live. <clears throat> what is up, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of the Smart Flip. So this is going to be... Uh, oh, yeah, we're live. We're good. So, guys, um, on this episode we're we're gonna keep things pretty pretty uh pretty chill honestly pretty laid back um not gonna you know not really gonna teach but i'm sure you're gonna grab some nuggets from some of the things that we talk about um i always do whenever i'm uh you know watching podcasts and stuff like that uh why am i not seeing this thing live in the group technical difficulties all that I anyway uh the smart flip is all about um you know, basically just providing some value in a different type of format for you guys. Let me grab my phone real quick. Matt, if you want to like intro Jared, that'd be great. All right. So if you go back just, I'd say at least a year and a half, uh, you would encounter a number of students that were being brought uh, into the Recelerator program between Chris and myself. Uh, Chris and I, of course, officially go back about two years after of, of having teamed up here as of this month. Uh, but one of those students that came on board, I think the summer of 2022, was Jared. And that is the guest that we have with us now. So, Jared, say hello to everybody. What's up, guys? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, Jared, you're you're two years with us now. Right. This month, I believe, as well. May. Yeah, so end of May is when I joined Recelerator. So yeah, it's closing in on two years. That's so cool, yeah. man. That's crazy. So it's pretty great. I really yeah. love like this because like, like I'll I'll be real. Like March of I guess it was about 2022 was when Recelerator really started taking off. Uh, we have a couple hundred students now. Uh, I think it's right now it's active at a, like 150 or so, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's really cool to see how that's grown, how Resell Deck has grown, how all of it has grown over time and brought on Matt, brought on Aaron, brought on Tyler, brought on Kayla. Like it's so cool. Um, but specifically, dude, um, you and I were talking the other night and uh dude, you're making moves, you know, in um yeah. in the space <laughs> of you know coaching now, which is uh, really cool to see. Um I didn't I don't think you even knew about this, Matt. Uh, but Jared started uh, teaching people how to pass the SAT and stuff like that. Um, yep. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't no, know. I don't no. know the details. All I know is he's signing clients and making racks now. So <laughs> well, <he's> sold, <laughs> I saw, real, I saw dude. a couple of posts and uh, I don't know if Jared, Jared's probably seen me. Like I like them. Like yeah. I don't know that I commented on them, but I definitely, you know, I'm, um, I'm a fly on the wall, you know, observing what's happening. And it obviously looks like, looks like some kids need some help with some math on the SAT, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be seeing Matt, right? I'm just like, oh, what's up? It's the boy Matt. <laughs> he knows what's going on now. <laughs> right on. Yeah. I got to show love. Man. Got to. I so, so um, a little background here too. Um, I'll, I'll do it. I know this is going to be people's like first introduction to me, to Matt, you know, and to, to people that, um, you know, don't watch and you know because this will be broadcasted on a couple of different areas um little background on me um i uh started off as a uh kind of a what i thought was a serial entrepreneur <laughs> um doing multiple <laughs> things at one time you know jack of all trades master of none type of thing mm -hmm. um really uh really though i come from uh a shrimp boat uh family type deal um, where we worked on shrimp boats when I was younger. Um, my dad ran a shrimp boat, put my mom through college, and she became a nurse after all of that. Um, so I grew up literally basically on a boat uh, from the time I was basically three years old, which is wild. Um, been working my whole life for the most part. Um, and then, you know, fast forward a couple of years. I'll just kind of do the whole intro quickly. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, I... Uh, started waiting tables at a place called Papado and, um, you know, slinging fondues and, you know, making the money, learning some skills, learning some customer service skills. That's by far the best customer service job I ever had. Um, and uh, I did really well at that. Uh, and then eventually, you know, tried multiple different things, tried Amway, tried Isogenics, tried this, tried that, tried multiple other drop shipping opportunities. 
uh, ClickBank, um, many things, right? Um, and <clears throat> so, and then I found, uh, and then I found phone flipping um, through David Kosciusko. Many of you probably know who that is. Many of you probably don't. Uh, he has since kind of retired from from doing that, um, from the coaching anyway. And uh, that was my mentor. And um, I kind of grew in his community, partnered with him, became the client success director for two years. So I had multiple people coming in. I was basically helping coach them on, and this is actually my first experience with coaching um, was, was through somebody else's program, which I thought was cool. Um, you know, I was, one thing I noticed about me was I, um, and I've started noticing this with a couple of my students too, is I wanted, I wanted to be the guy that learned everything. Like, and and I wanted to be in an environment for that. Like Dave would say we needed to do something and I was just raising my hand, like I'm done. I, like it's done. Like I'm doing it. I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna buy a course and learn how to do it. You know? And I'd use my own money to do that. Let's go, baby. And um <laughs> what I realized later on is that a lot of people don't have that. Like like a lot of people don't have that drive to to learn. Uh, which was very interesting to me. And it actually put me down a different road of making things easier to learn. Um, and then later on, I uh, was running Facebook ads, sharing my results. And um, people started reaching out and they were like, hey, can you run my ads too? And I was like, sure. <laughs> um, and so that happened. And then uh, a couple of years later, now we're here. Um, bought a couple more courses, learned how to actually teach people. Um, stuff like that. And uh, that's my intro. Uh, Jared, we'll go with your intro next. And then I like Matt a lot, especially with where he came from. So we'll leave his for the last. Jared, <laughs> you want to give a little intro, bro, to who you are, what you do, where you came from? Yeah, yeah man. I'm from the Bay. I'm from the Bay Area, San Jose, born and raised. <clears throat> hey. um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I grew up thinking I was going to go into the STEM field, right? You know, I'm Vietnamese. So my parents are like, hey, you're going to be a doctor. You're going to be engineer what whatever right uh or my dad was like oh no i always wanted you to be an entrepreneur but i think that's a load of horse crap right <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh so I, I i pretty much i started my entrepreneurship journey you know just probably like a lot of people was like i tried you know doing the drop shipping when i my first year of college I had no money and i was like okay this is like you know i was sold on this idea that you don't need money to start drop shipping which is a complete <laughs> lie <laughs> It's a complete That's how they get you, dude. Yeah, and um, it's okay. I, you know that that was like a break even experience. So I was like, you know, I was like, okay, that's cool. And then uh, after that, I saw Ryan Pineda's video on couch flipping, and it was like kind of at the at the at you know at the end of its like reign. You know what I mean? So I started doing couch flipping, and then I decided, you know, after some, I had a really bad experience with one guy, and I think I've, you know I've told you this this Chris right on um, a couple of time a couple of scenarios where. You know, this guy came to my my storage unit and he made me take out literally every single couch that I had. Oh, and yeah, then I was told me about yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. And then no, because and I had like a like every single couch I had. I was there, we were there for hours. And then he was like, <laughs> I don't want any of them. And then I was like, Okay, I'm done with this. I, <laughs> I called my partner that day. I was like, dude, I'm I'm not doing this anymore. Right. It's like <laughs> this was a good. Um, but then great thing is in the same month, that's when I found Recelerator, right? Oh. I think you Chris, found the starter you, kit. Oh yeah, the starter kit, right? Yeah, yeah sorry YouTube, about that. I believe. Uh, yeah, because I because I was like, there has to be a better way. And I told my girlfriend at the my, my girlfriend at the time, I was like, I'm done flipping couches. There has to be a better way. And I I found I started looking up phones, right? And then I I found somebody else's video, right? But it wasn't giving me too much value. But then mm -hmm. I was like, I think I can make this work. And then I told her about it, and then she laughed in my face, kind of. She's like, you got some phones? And I was like, and that that kind of gave me the drive to be like. Hey, I'm gonna make this work. And then I found I found your videos, Chris. Um, you know about how to set up your ads. Found the seven dollar kit, mm -hmm. and then boom, rest is rest is history, bro. You know, and then joined Recelerator, and then you know cha changed my life. Decided I didn't want to be a chemical engineer anymore. Uh, right you know, after you graduated too, huh? Well, I I found I found this in my junior year of college, bro. So. I was like, I had two more years. I, I was already like on the path, like, oh man, what am I going to do with this? I hate engineering. I hate STEM. <laughs> so wait, like, okay. So wait, 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 you were in your junior year. So were you like a, like a five-year major? Did you double major? 
No, so I cha- I was originally going to be a doctor. So I was in bio, mm-hmm. right? I was in biology. My sophomore year, I was like, biology gotcha. makes you no money, right? Unless yeah. you become a doctor. So I was like, I'm going to do yeah. engineering because at least you have a potential to make, you know, six figures. Um, yeah. So finished, engi- you know, I was in engineering. And then even after, after the, you know, I, lo- even, I lost my, my eBay account last year, as you know. And, right. you know, that kind of yeah. set me through like a, Right. I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't know what I was yeah. going to do. You know, uh-huh. took up sales for a little bit with Chris and, you know, another program and then decided you know, I wanted to do my own coaching. So that, here, that's I, where I am. Can I, I uh, drop in on that real quick? Yeah, that's like, it. So I remember specifically when that happened and, and you were like, like you were asking if you could, I believe, sell Recelerator. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And, and you were like, I don't know anything about sales. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I got a course. It's like eight hours long if you want to go through it, you know, and you were like, yes, now. Like <laughs> the one thing about you, Jared, that I noticed is you are very like, like that you're going to go through the thing. You're going to do what you say really fast at that, which is awesome. Um, Not a lot of people have that. Like, especially when, when something falls through, a lot of people just give up. Like eBay suspends them. They just give up on the entire business model we've seen it we've seen it a lot it's seen it a lot yeah. yeah so go ahead and continue i just wanted to kind of butt in there and oh yeah no that that was it man you know i i, I remember you know because that was a year ago when i was when i was selling uh recelerator now, it, it's been a, it's been a year now which is crazy to me you know um hmm. but just, just in general you know it's like you you two were like my, were my were my first mentors that you know in, in anything really right so I, I remember my first class with matt when he taught me how to like break up nintendo switches it was like <laughs> i was like uh, it was it was mind-blowing for me right and uh mm-hmm. but yeah you know it, it, re- the thing about reselling man is like you cannot do it from you can this is like one of the things where it's like i know like a lot of program a lot not programs but a lot of like niches right like they say like oh you can work from anywhere right and, right. and I sure like and it, it is true for a lot of things, but, but I really feel like reselling is one of those things where it's like, yeah, there is actually no excuse in which you yeah. couldn't do it anywhere. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Sure. That, and that is so like, so I get a lot, a lot of people in the DMs, right? They're like, of course you work do. in my area. Will this, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's every day, right? So I, by the way, for those of you that are DMing me, if I don't respond to you, you're just in a long list of people I haven't responded to. Um, yeah, we still we got love for you though, but it's like yeah, got love for you. I mean, pay me, I'll talk to you, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a price uh, for time and knowledge, right? Yeah, for real. Like, uh, only got so much time, and I got multiple things to do every day, right? So, and you um, have a family. You have family, so yeah, of course. Um, where what was I talking about? I forgot what I was talking about. It'll come back. But um go ahead and continue, Jared. I'll probably remember in a minute. No, no, that I mean that 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 was that's pretty much it, man. You know, it's like I think I think the the best part of reselling, right, is that it gives you just avenues to do other stuff. You know what I mean? Cuz oh, yeah. cuz without without reselling, I wouldn't have been able to to get this this other SAT math business up on the ground, you know what I mean? Because I, I'm yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. The skills that you learn from reselling. Oh, like, let's let's go through them like one by one here, real quick, mm-hmm. right? Not only can you do it from anywhere, like literally anywhere. Uh, if you have five thousand people in your town, guess what that means? There's five thousand phones. Oh, yeah. right. How do you buy five thousand phones a month when you're brand new? No, you don't. The likelihood that there's somebody else in that area that's going to do that is very low. That doesn't even bring into like account the Nintendo Switches the game consoles, the VR systems, the this, the that, the like all this stuff, Cameras. right? Yep. Yeah, like there's 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 money everywhere once you know how to see it. It's like true. that that's the key there, right? But let's go over the skill sets that you learn from learning how to flip phones and electronics and stuff like that. What what would you say is the number one skill you learned 
Like, oh, the the number one skill I, I already knew off the top of my head. It's getting used to people saying no to you, bro. Like that <laughs> that is that is the number one skill, and and you know just like <laughs> messenger conversations, right? It's like it's You're a little welcome. different. <laughs> yeah, th- thank you, thank you, right? Because when you guys, because you know before 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 I started reselling, right? I was like, I was like nervous, you know. what I mean, like I had like my balls were in my stomach type of thing, where like whenever I would like. Whenever I would ask anybody a question, right? And this could be for anything, right? It could be asking a teacher for help, whatever, right? I, I would hate yeah. just oh, talking yeah. or just asking, right? And, you know, most, and like you said, nine out of 10 times, people are going to say no, right? And of those nine yeah. out of 10, two of those guys are going to tell you to f- off, right? Like they're going to tell you to F off. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're not going to be nice about it. Yeah, you're um, not wrong. So that's that's the number one thing, right? And you know, of course, I could sit, talk about like, oh yeah, messenger, right? I could talk about you know, reach out stuff like that. But the mm-hmm. number one thing that reselling teaches you is like, dude, like you have to go through, you have to go through a sea of no's to get to a yes. So don't mm-hmm. look for the yeses, just comb through the no's. You know what I mean? Like, because like, if you have like a bunch of seashells on the beach, and there's like ten of those seashells that have a million dollars in them. You're not gonna try and find every single one. You're not gonna look for the ones that are in there. You're gonna you're gonna go through the ones that you know don't have the seat, don't have the million dollars in it. You know, so it's so that by the time you do find it, you're like, oh, there it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that that's like probably the number one thing is getting used to and yeah, getting used to to hearing no because because even in in coaching, you're gonna you're gonna find you're gonna have like a trillion no's, right? So mm-hmm. until you find the right client. Dude, it's um, so yeah, uh, in coaching that. it's like one out of 150 right yeah like and that's that's the people you talk to that's not leads right mm-hmm. like it can be 300 leads 150 of those you might talk to and then one of them might say yes i need help right because most people just admit that they that most people would rather admit that they don't need help right <laughs> than say they need help right right most people need i need help with most things, right? I needed help with most things. Um, and that's okay. Right. Like I've paid thousands of dollars to mentors and courses and yeah, because I needed the help. Like I didn't want to learn it on my own. Like I could have, like I could have like spent the countless hours going over and over and over. Like how many, how many, I mean, let's just take this into account, Jared, like how many videos on YouTube did you watch how many hours did you spend with, you know, looking for a nugget, right? Looking for something that's that I probably could have just told you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you know, you're right. You're right. You know, it's like, cause before I found even just a starter kit, I was like, I, you know, it, was, it took me a while just, I, 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 before the starter kit, I never, I never got a phone. Right. I didn't even know, I didn't even know it was possible. Right. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. So same, same thing, same lot. thing with, um, yeah. Same thing with the the current guys I'm with right now, right? Um, the teacher project, right? They they helped me with the they helped me with everything as well, right? Before them, right? I was trying to do it on my own. I mean, Chris, man, I try. I mean, I freaking told you, right? It's like <laughs> I was spe- like I, I was like you know if I didn't have reselling, it probably would have been out of business quick, you know what I mean? Because the reselling just funnels straight into that, and you know I was just trying to do it on my own, and I was trying to go with the wrong mentors, right? And with you know when you find the right when you find the right one, right, that can just tell you straight up, like, hey, you know, it's like, you don't have to go through those hours of content. You can just, like, I'll just tell you what to do right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's game changing, bro. It saves you, it saves you like thousands in the long run. You know what I mean? I wish I just, honestly, I wish I, 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 I got a little cocky. You know what I mean? Not cocky. That's well, not the right word. Um, so I found that whenever you have a certain level of success within a certain thing, you start thinking that you can do other things really well as well. And I've went through that a few times. Now, like whenever I learned chatbots, dude, I thought I was a freaking, I thought I was a ninja, but now <laughs> like I'm not like the game has changed again. Right. And there's mm-hmm. only so many games that you can learn. Right. And that is something I've come to realize. Like I can be incredibly proficient at certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and something that Hormozy talks about a lot is the first 20 hours you become proficient. Like that's, that's all it takes to become proficient at one thing. Right. So for those of you listening, if you haven't put 20 hours into reselling or flipping anything, then you don't, you know, of course you're not going to be good. 
like you're gonna suck like that's just the game right if it takes 20 hours to become proficient the mastery comes after that right and now and the thing with that is like i say reselling but i actually mean 20 hours of negotiation 20 hours of reach outs 20 hours of selling stuff online 20 hours of this other thing right so Mm -hmm. like that is the game like becoming proficient at all of those things and then becoming a master at certain things look at aaron for example like aaron is supposed to be on this podcast he sleeps in but you know he's a master at negotiations because he spent so many hours doing it i think he's up to forty five thousand conversations now total can you imagine the skill level that gives you like, Dude, I can't even ima- I can't even imagine that, man. I look at the phone for an hour. I'm, I sometimes I just get tired of looking at the damn screen. So I'm like, I'm like God, 45,000 is like I feel that, man. I feel that about for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to I want to pop over to Matt. I want Matt to tell his story real quick, and then we'll just uh, we'll just we'll just talk about the random stuff of research. Oh hell yeah, I want to. Uh, cool. Matt, if you want to give your background, dude. Um, yeah. Well, I I definitely want to share that I. There were two little sound bites though that I just uh that had me curious. And so like for for Chris for Jared and then guys, I'll I'm happy to share my story. First thing, Chris, you said that people just started like asking you, like, hey, can you run my ads for me for me? So like, am I wrong in assuming that to a degree part of what developed from Recelerator was a kind of a happy accident? It was just like people people noticed a skill set that was budding for you in advance of you even realizing, Hey, I should start like a coaching like business. Well, That's usually how everything happens for me. Right. Um, like I become pretty good at something. Right. Mm -hmm. And then people Mm -hmm. just come and they're like, Hey, can you help me with this? And that that's just kind of how it happens. And then it turns into a business magically. Right. Like that's just kind of what happens. And then, so a good example of this is like, uh, the ads actually are the best example. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I was I was just getting good at Facebook ads. Like I was obsessed with learning how to get good at them. And mm-hmm. I was doing really well. I had my first 10 grand in profit month on Facebook mm-hmm. ads alone, no reach outs, none of that. And mm-hmm. I was sharing that, right? Mm-hmm. And I was really proud of it. And mm-hmm. people just reached out and they were like, "Hey, can you can you do my stuff?" And what mm-hmm. that led to was like, I mean, I guess like and then and then I did it. And I still remember my first client. I charged him 97 bucks for one month to run his ads because I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I'll just take the ads I'm using for me and use them for you. And yeah. And that's what happened, right? And yeah. uh after that, um I jumped into some marketing courses. I bought Billy Jean's course, I bought clients and community, I bought mm. I just really dove into marketing, found a love for it. And right. I think, you know, people pay you for what you love, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. like you can see when, I mean, you guys, you guys know I'm, I like marketing. Like that's my thing. Yeah. I enjoy it. I study it kind yeah. of a tad bit obsessed with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of how, yeah, it just, it just evolves, man. I just think that's fascinating because like for people that watch those people that listen to this, like i I, I hope it helps to kind of cultivate awareness that when you start to develop a skill, not just like mess around with it, but really start to move towards, okay, I want to be, I want, we all, ev- I think everybody wants to be good at something. Like I want to excel at, at a specific thing, you know, and as a kid, you feel like maybe it's baseball, maybe it's basketball, you know, maybe it's math, maybe it's school, but then like you really start to, um, kind of develop the chops for something and you start to see yourself kind of get this stride and this rhythm. And then you realize that like this skill almost like carves a space out for you, like where opportunities begin to become available. And so it's like, um, there's an element, I think, within like this process of reselling where that's that's possible too. But I just think that, you know, whether whether somebody is, you know, becoming a reseller or not, I just think that that is a, uh, that's a great takeaway, you know, from this conversation is, uh, you know, there's a book by Cal Newport called so good, they can't ignore you. And, uh, if anybody's listening to this, Hey, you guys should, you know, go check that book out because, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty great. Um, another book by Malcolm Gladwell called outliers, which talks about, 
um, just, you know, getting in that. This is a, a first original book that talked about that 10,000 hour concept that maybe uh, you've heard other people plug and talk about. Jared, my question for you, and I know I still got to come around to myself. Um, I just, I hate missing these moments. I love good stories. And I think we all do. It's like, yeah. what, for, what for you, man, is like, I'm over here. I have a, I have a pencil. Um, but I was curious, like <laughs> for you, like, what is that? Uh, what was that aha moment when you started like free actually getting proficient at reselling but post like i joined the uh starter kit like what was that moment where like you went whoa i think i've got something i th i think these guys aren't full of crap i think this stuff actually works like what Dude, was that distinct moment that that was that's an easy one bro i it was literally my first phone deal my literally my first pro phone deal um Oh, actually, there's. I think there's two. There's two moments, right? And, and Chris, okay. I think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna like the the second one. The first moment when I sold okay. my first phone, I put it on eBay, and it sold in seconds. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, I was like, there's no way, right? I was like, this. <laughs> I, I, I didn't feeling. believe it. I didn't believe it, right? Because because in in my in now I'm in my bank account, I, you know, it's like going to my bank account. I was gonna have a hundred bucks, and I spent twenty bucks on this freaking phone. Right. I was like, nah, I was like, I thought I, I thought a bot brought bought it. Right. But then I checked the I checked the, the feedback. <laughs> you thought eBay had made a mistake. You yeah. were so in shock. Yeah. Because okay. I was like, I was I, I thought a bot <laughs> did it or as I was getting scammed. Right. And I clicked on the, the page and it's like it's like one thousand five hundred um, feedback or whatever. Right. So I was like, this is OK. This is legit. And then I just waited a day to ship it out just in case it got canceled. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, holy shit. All right. No. Um, that was That's hilarious. That's that was so the fun. first time where I'm just like, hey, this worked. And that was, by the way, that was just straight from the starter kit. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I made like, I made like a grand, right. Just from you the made starter like kit. You made like $1,100 in two weeks. I yeah. Remember, and I was just like, you, you, were, you were riding on that initial excitement. Right. Mm -hmm. I still remember yeah. the first time one of my phones sold. Right. Um, it was a Samsung, like a, it was like, I believe it was a Samsung S6. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, yeah, you dude. forgot. You, yeah, you OG, So I've been bro, doing so. this for eight years, right? <laughs> yeah, so that, that phone at the time was selling for like $200, right? Um, I remember vividly, um, I was at my job. Um, I was at, I was at Papado. I was, I was waiting tables. I went to the bathroom and I checked my phone and I saw, um, I believe it was 169 95 because uh, Dave always told us to put 95 at the end of everything. And, and I was like, Oh my gosh, like I might be able to get out of this place. Like I don't have to, I, I don't like, I made money outside of, of this job, like the place I've yeah. always made money. Right. Or yeah. working some other hourly thing. And at that right. moment it became like real for me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh wow. Like, <laughs> this thing might be legit. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, I, I, I really wish you could relive like certain feelings again, you know? Um, but like right. once, like, cause, cause nowadays you wake up to like three to four sales at, at a time and you're like, ah, I gotta ship all these freaking packages and <laughs> oh, it's going to take so much time out of my day. And I made too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you know, like you get right. hassled numb. by your own success. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I woke up the other day and I was like, Oh gosh, I made like $200 in profit off of a computer. And I was like, gosh, darn it. I got to go get a specific box for this computer. And, blah, right. and yeah. I was complaining to myself. <laughs> right. And I was like, oh. that's hilarious. And like, like having this conversation now kind of brings it back to reality. Right. <laughs> 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 what a great problem to have right oh no for sure yeah it's like okay so i, I have a, that, yeah that was one jared you that said you had, you had two distinct so what's what's the second one there's a second one um but basically basically right it's like after you st finish the starter kit right it's like you 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 know you get like a the call with chris right so i hopped on that call with chris right and i was like this sounds great but then i, I was a broke college kid i had like me i had like literally uh two thousand dollars to my name or something like that right something something like under 3k it's like to my name and um, you were you know, still couch flipping right you were you were college yeah, and it, couch was, flipping. it was like a, it was a it was a it was a combination of a little bit of couch flipping and then also i was a i was a tutor for uh for for chemistry over at san jose state university right oh, cool. so yeah so like but, okay. but then again I was, like, I was like i was like in no means to do anything and i was like really bummed out right it was like oh shit i really wanted to i really wanted to learn more um, right. but I didn't have the money at the time. So 
literally and then you know less than like i think it was like a week or two later i forgot the exact timetable but then i get a message from chris he's like hey dude we're actually having a class right now right um we're actually having a class right now do you want to just sit in on it right he's like and he's just like he's like just just sit in if you enjoy it you enjoy it if not right then no harm no foul so yeah. i i, I hopped on, on that yeah I so i hop i hopped on on that right and then and you guys are giving classes on uh, uh on like uh, just things i have i have never freaking like i was like I was like, okay, let, let's let's see what this is about. And like, there was just stuff, like, I was like, I already learned a lot from the starter kit program, right? right. I was like, I was like, realistically, what kit, what what else do I need to know? And then mm -hmm. I went in there and I was like, holy shit, I don't even know what I don't know. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> um, so then off there, after after off rip, right? You know, uh, he asked me right uh, after we left the call, he was like, how do you feel, right? And I was like, dude, I'm like, let's just do it. Um, so, like, I literally had. Like I didn't have like any money in my bank account, right? So I just, but I, I, I put it on PayPal credit, and I was like, I'm just gonna take a gamble right now because the worst case is that like, like I have six months, right? Um, yeah. I took the gamble, um, and it was it really wasn't a gamble. <laughs> it, it really wasn't a gamble because like, it, it was so impossible not to like. It was no, it was so impossible not to like you know learn. You know what I mean? If you really try, and that's with anything, right? That's with anything. If you just if you just sit down and learn and you actually apply mm -hmm. things, yeah. and I was like, you're not, you can't fail. You can't fail. I mean, you, yeah. you're going to, you're going to fail like in the short term, right? <laughs> right. Everyone fails in the short term. You have to, right. I remember, I remember my first deal after I joined the program, I, I spent way too much money. Right. And I ended up losing like a hundred bucks a phone. I bought like four phones. And I was like, Holy crap. I was shooting myself in the foot. Right. It's like that stuff that is going to happen when you first start out. Right. But like, if yeah, you, we've all been there yeah. for sure. Exactly. But to answer the question, right. It's like, that those that was like the big moment where I was like, aha, something else besides school <laughs> can actually do me something that yeah is viable, you know. So those yeah. that was my big my big like pre pre recelerator post starter kit like aha. Yeah, those two I think uh, with that it's like you know once you realize there's things outside of regular school mm -hmm. that make you money like ten times yeah. faster than for yeah. example college can. Um, but the thing is, is like all the, all the entrepreneurs aren't teaching in college, right? They're out making money, right? Like Facts. <laughs> they're not in the, in the college just teaching, right? Yep. You know, I mean, it right, would be yeah. great if like, uh, mm -hmm. that was the case, but they're too busy making money to be teaching for pennies, you know, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. They uh, don't make anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> it, it, it I still make... remember in being in an algebra class. We were learning about, and I went. I went to college, just so everybody knows. Um, I, I, very ambitious, right? I I scholarshiped my entire way through college, um, so I worked hard for that too. And I'm not going to sit here and say I didn't. Um, I applied for every scholarship under the freaking sun to get into college, and I got thirty six thousand dollars worth. Um, and I threw the first pitch at an Astros baseball game because of that. Let's go. So, did you really? That's pretty really cool. Did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh so my best friend, uh his name is Gentry, he was pissed because he he loves baseball, right? And I told him <laughs> to apply for the scholarship. I was like, dude, we're given like a twenty five hundred dollar scholarship and we didn't know that they were gonna uh, you know do the first pitch thing. Um because they just pulled it out of a hat and I, you know, got it and man he was pissed because he loves he loves baseball so much and but he didn't get it no sir it was chris's turn he didn't get it but <laughs> it, you know and but that's the thing is is like that is a person who who's really good and really like um he's probably the perfect example actually of somebody who is is a really good with dealing with people just didn't he and really good at learning just didn't apply he just didn't apply and that's it and that goes with the courses and stuff too right yeah. you can buy your way in right. and you can learn because in the starter kit i say you apply this as you're learning it apply it and i say it how many times do i say it jared like but, like but every i think like every video. module yeah every, every yeah it's like module, yeah. as you watch this pull it up s split screen and do it right because yeah. otherwise you won't and i know that and honestly, it took me a long time to figure that out. I didn't realize people didn't do things as they were learning it. I just always did that. I know it was weird to me. 
um, that people would just go through a course and then do nothing. I think the reason why is because they, they think they have to be perfect before they, and, and Matt, I mean, kind of chime in with me on that. It's like, do, like, do you feel like they just need to be perfect? And then that, like, you know, then they want to be done. Right. I feel like that's kind of like, I think yeah. they say something along the lines of like, if like the opposite of done is, is the enemy of done is perfect. Right. I think that's, that's how the, the saying goes something along those lines. Yeah. Good. The enemy of good is perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. But like, I think, I think there's a couple things that kind of segue into my own story, which I'll hop into here in a second. Um, but I think like something really critical that seems to be revealing itself in this conversation is that there are these systems in play, you know, within the world's construct, within like the values set up by culture where it's like, Oh, here, here's, here's the way that I have to make money. And entrepreneurially the entrepreneur comes along and goes, well, you know, what if I don't want to paint this kind of paint on this kind of canvas? What if I can go like paint on this other canvas over here and still use that to um, to monetize this particular skill that I've developed, right? You're now, Jared, you're now monetizing a skill that you, that started when you were actually in college, you know, segueing into like reselling. And then, you know, from like reselling, what reselling did is it charged your belief. It gave you the confidence that you could step out of this arena of the world's normal systems, you know, education and you know, go for a traditional job track and boom, now you realize, hey, I've taken a course before. I bet I could take another course. I bet I could learn another skill that I could monetize just as easily as this. And what I think you end up proving to yourself, just like Chris did as a server at Papado, is, oh my gosh, there's a way to do this outside of, you know, a track that somebody else has set up that ultimately, let's be real, if you're a part of some other kind of business or institution like a school, your capacity is going to be limited by the boundaries that are set up by that institution or by that other person's dream or business. Right. And it, I don't think it doesn't mean that, you know, it's not, it's a great place for everybody to learn, but I think if you want to kind of prove to yourself, like how far can I go? How fast can I run? Like how, how um, well could I be at this? Right. Um, eventually you kind of have to, step outside of the confines of that institution or that structure or that system and kind of start to demonstrate and prove to yourself, okay, let me, let me figure out for myself, do I have what it takes? And so like the thing I love about this is I love how this kind of like pounds the pavement of like belief and like action. So like for me, I grew up uh, in the deep South in South Carolina and came from an incredibly blue collar family. Um, I guess you could say like, very religious family as well. I still consider myself a man of faith, a follower of God and Jesus. And um, that uh, is something important to me because like having the faith, having the belief to think that I could do something was not something that was like highly like promoted, like within my family, even though I'd say, you know, like oh, you know, strong faith roots. Like I watched my dad work insurance for 18 to 20 years. I watched my mom work at Fuji photo film. Uh, they had a great you know, plant within like my, my city. Uh, but still like a lot of the deep South was entrenched with a systematized way of working. And in my hometown, it was a cotton mill. Everybody knew that if you lived and worked a job and you grew up and you graduated high school, you could probably go work at the cotton mill until that those jobs began to be outsourced overseas because the labor cost was cheaper or because of this and that, you know, but for whatever reason, when that began to kind of cave and crater, you began to see literally the economic and the demographic construct of my hometown change, right? Like people didn't have the job security that they had before. There was no guarantee that somebody else's uh, ambition or business was going to be able to make a space for you to live a good, comfortable life. So what do you do when you run up against that wall? And for me as a kid, like I'm watching this kind of unfold. And so I grew up playing soccer, did incredibly well with soccer as well in the classroom. So I scholarship my way through undergraduate and uh, I was a goalkeeper because I'm six, five, uh, about two twenty, And oh, <laughs> I did not know you're six five, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a tall I'm a tall guy. So in a room, you'll you'll notice me, right? I can never hide at prom, you know, dancing. It was like, hey, who's that guy? It's like, you know, uh, sorry, I look awkward ducking behind other people. And so, yeah, I I played uh, college soccer as a goalkeeper. Um, my parents did instill like a a tremendous work ethic, like you know, push yourself, push that effort. Um, and I found that I had a guy who was uh, when I was 12 years old. Um, ended up being my college coach. He took me under his wing and he started to train me. 
Like he literally started to, I guess you could say, almost like teach me the discipline of what it meant to be a goalkeeper. And I would go out early in the morning, like 12, 13, 14 in the summers, the grass is still wet, but I'm out there just kind of, you know, slopping around like the front of the goal, like blocking shots and just working my tail off uh, to put in this like hustle. Um, and I ended up, you know, being the first college graduate in my family. Uh, graduated with a degree in visual arts. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, graphic design, all that kind of stuff. Uh, art making is still a passion of mine and something that I'm kind of starting to get back into, but it's not like, it hasn't been my 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 big MO, but I have, you know, paid bills here and there, you know, with graphic design and stuff. Ended up going to grad school, got a degree in education, uh, finished grad school, went into the classroom. Uh, I'll tell you guys a, a very funny part of the story when I went into the classroom, part of the reason I went into the classroom is I wanted to entrepreneurially like step outside of, uh, you know, having graduated and say like, you know, dad, I, I want to go make my own art. My dad goes, are you sure that that's going to pay the bills? Are you confident? And it's funny, his confidence impacted mine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's weird, like modeling yeah. leadership, the reason, like the thing I think about was like as a dad, as a husband. Um, and I was like, I guess like, you know, a, a, a leader within like a niche of uh, reselling is like, you know, you're you're modeling whether you want to or not. Like leadership leads up or it leads down. And so it, it immediately made me aware that like my father couldn't take me somewhere he had never been. And I don't hold that against him. He didn't know what he didn't know, but he was concerned or worried that his son wasn't going to have the money or didn't have the skill to pay the bills, as some people might say, uh, just through my own like art making ability, which I would have told you at that point, like I, I won best in show my senior year. Like I was very good, you know, at this skill, but I, I, the thing that, that my education didn't teach me was how to take this and have it pay the bills. Like, how do you monetize the skill set in such a way that people want something you have? Cause we all know you can have the best idea in the world, but if you can't sell it, you don't have a lot. And so like Chris, Chris's skill with marketing, I mean, is like the, you know, that's the linchpin between like, hey, I've developed a skill to where now I can present a skill to other people, a guy like you, Jared, and it can become something that can actually put food on your table. So like, I didn't know all of this, right? I learned all of this literally by myself, you know, having to backfill the ignorance and lack of information uh, that I had moving forward. So, I, you know, I went to the classroom. Uh, then, you know, I noticed that a lot of students didn't have mentorship. So I got involved in ministry and I worked either in the classroom or the or the local church for literally like the next 20 years. Um, and this this season of life only ended like a year ago. Um, but I felt like there was a commitment and there was a call upon my life to go help teach um, and mentor and help students walk through these spaces. I worked in some really tough spaces. I worked in spaces where, you know, there was a lot of absentee parents uh, a lot of students being raised by auntie or mom, you know, just mom only or, or grandma and grandpa, you know, and it's just like, like broken, fractured family dynamics is what I became very familiar with for about three to five years of my life. And so I've seen students walk through like really tough situations, right? I, I had a student who was, you know, when she was in ninth grade, she was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. She had cancer, right? And a Spanish speaking family. So I sat with that family, you know, for about a year in the hospital room, uh, grateful for my, you know, Spanish teacher in high school, Mr. Reigns, who taught me Spanish. And, you know, I got to use that to be a benefit. So I like, I sat with people through hard things, but the thing that was always resonating with me is like, okay, how do I, how do I give my family something that I don't feel like I, I had, which was knowledge of how do I make money work for me? Right. Cause I know I can work hard. I know that I've got skills. I know that I've, you know, done enough to like stand in front of people, like things that I don't think I've ever told Chris or nobody will ever hear unless they're listening to this podcast. Like I've coached high school soccer. I've actually even coached division one soccer. Um, and so I've, I've, I've done th some of those things that I think a lot of people is like, Oh yeah, this is where I want to stop and like park myself and live and exist for a long time. But the thing for me is I wanted to be able to, I just wanted to be able to wake up. And if I wanted to make a decision to, you know, bless my family with a, you know, a, a day trip or, you know, go put $200 in my parents' hands or just be um, a generous, open-handed individual. I didn't want to be confined by the constriction of these world systems and somebody else's uh, business or idea. Uh, I didn't want to allow that to have so much persuasion on my ability. 
to make those decisions, right? Um, and so that 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 was a deeply ingrained frustration for me. And that's when uh, my wife, who was working, we 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 left a position. I left a position in South Carolina. Uh, literally, my father was diagnosed with liver disease uh, back in 2017. Uh, he just <clears throat> recently passed about 10, 11 weeks ago. And uh, but he he at the moment that he was diagnosed with that, I was like. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to go back to to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm going to move back from South Carolina. I'm going to go take care of my parents. And when I made that decision, I moved there with no house, no car, and my wife and I had no jobs. None of that. Right? And we cruised into town kind of on fumes, like really borrowing someone else's vehicle. Uh, my wife got hired with a position within like 2 weeks. I said I'm going to get myself a job working as a graphic designer and I did. Um, I actually ended up transitioning from that job to another teaching position because it was in a really great environment with some really rad people. And I did that for the next six years and took care of my folks. Now, two years into that job, I came across two courses. I came across uh, a group called Flea Market Flipper by Rob and Melissa Stevenson. Shout out to the Stevensons. They're great people. And then also David Kosciuszko's uh, reselling group. And within that group, um, there were other guys obviously rubbing shoulders with David Kosciuszko. Obviously, Aaron was there. Feldon was there, NYC phone buyer, um, and Chris. And the cool thing about that is all three of these people I would describe as like remarkably successful within the space of reselling. Um, I didn't know all that. All I saw was a bunch of people like flipping electronics and I thought that was really cool because gadgetry and electronics are neat. And I was like, cool. Um, a lot of people are reselling phones. I'm, I'm just trying to make a couple of bucks on the side. Like I'm still teaching my wife. She was working and then she was released from her position. And I was like, I got to start making some money. I had tried a lot of things. I was like even looking at doing some courier door, DoorDash stuff. But ultimately what I settled on is the very first time that you could uh, bird and lime scooters were in my city. I was like one of the first people to sign up for that. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make $10,000 like charging scooters, which I literally did. Um, oh, and <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was nuts. Like I was like, I would get up at 6.30 in the morning uh, before I started charging the scooters and I would like set, uh, I would like, all right, let me get my kids up. Let me go to work. Let me do like the teaching thing. I would leave that. I would come home. I would help my family unwind. I would leave the house at eight 30 or nine in the evening when those, those scooters could be picked up. And I would be gone for anywhere from two to four hours trying to grab as many freaking scooters as I could. And I would put them all in my garage. At one point I'd have my garage filled like 60 to 80 scooters. Oh my Jesus, right? dude, but your wife must've been pissed. <laughs> she, she was, but at the same time, she knew that what I was doing was not born out of desire. It was born right. out of necessity. Yeah. Like I'm doing this cause I have to, cause if I don't, my squad's not going to eat as well. Right. And do when that hits you in the gut, when that punches you as a man, like you're like, what, what yeah. am I about to do here? hundred you know? percent. Yeah, dude. I like... don't, I don't have time to complain. I don't have time to think about how I feel in this moment. I've got to act and I've got to do this. And if I don't, then the people that are in my wake are going to suffer. Right. Crazy part is that's where the wins happen. Like, like you, yeah. you you said it the other day uh to me actually necessity breeds uh innovation right yeah and yeah. it absolutely does um so continue on this is great yeah so um so yeah i said i'm gonna i'm gonna do this till i make ten thousand dollars and i freaking did it like and i would have to get i would have to go to bed after my family went to bed i would have to wake up before my family woke up to pick to pick up those scooters and then also drop them off i used that money for a couple of reasons um i bought the first flipping course and then i also bought dave's course uh, i bought a course on how to uh how to invest through the stock market and i also bought some crypto later on um but i proved to myself in that season that first of all Outside of the boundaries of a regular work schedule, I can do incredibly hard things. Um, and uh, I think that there's a season that people can do that. I don't think you can do that like for an enduring long time because you'll just like melt yourself down and like become yeah. worthless to everyone around you. But you can. Um, I did that for eight or nine months. And then I had I 10 grand and uh, I, 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 bought, I bought the first reselling course and I was like, I'd flipped a few things on eBay before. I had like 21 five-star reviews on eBay, but I had my eBay account since 2005. I'd sold some toys when we moved to make some side cash. 
you know, to, to do things in that and pay some bills. And so I, I sold a, uh, a hiking backpack that I used to travel my kids around in when they were really small and I didn't need it anymore because they weren't so small anymore. And, um, and then when everybody was, uh, you know, the phone flipping craze from about like, probably like 20, 2018, you could tell like people were just going gaga over phones. So oh, yeah. it was, well, it was so like a barrier of kind of the wild west. <laughs> I mean, the barrier yeah. of entry was non-existent, right? Right. Like you just yeah. throw some ads up on marketplace, let go and offer up and you were getting leads. You know, <laughs> it was popping off. And of course, Dave, I think struck, struck gold first. You know, it's oh, like, gosh, you talk yeah. about, you talk about the gold rush. It's like, who really made money in the gold rush? The people getting the gold or the guys selling the shovels to the people going to get the gold. And Dave was a shovel salesman. And you're like, dude, freaking, hey, this guy's smart. But then like, I'm looking at the same methodology that I've learned through these two reselling courses. And I go, well, there's a lot of consoles over here. I said like, there's Nintendo, Super Nintendo. I see this Atari, right? And I didn't know anything about video games, except I thought they were fun. They were a critical part of my childhood, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of Street Fighter, a lot of, a lot of games back in the day, of course. And so uh, I just started using those same principles to apply to um, reselling. Came across a couple, you know, distinct methodologies, approaches. I guess you'd kind of call them low-key proprietary, but like not in the sense of like, you know, um, <laughs> I can't teach them or share them with other people. But uh, so that's what I do now in the Recelerator program. But when I started doing that, I was able to effectively start to replace the income that I was making from the scooter hustle uh and not have to stay out as late my wife was happy right because i wasn't like pulling up at the house at 11 30 a.m with the garage door open uh and she's like what are you doing outside you know what what's going on like our kids are asleep and i'm i'm like i know babe so i'm gonna be done with this soon right and you're having to like you know put out all those fires while you're still making money um you know any any husband listening to this and understanding wife would would feel me on this um <clears throat> Yeah, stay up but then 2 it's like listing items. Yeah. Right. But then, you know, my, my phone starts blowing up in the middle of my teaching day. And I'm like, dude, I just, I just bought a console for 50 bucks and made $200 on it. Like I just did a hundred percent ROI on this. I just did 150% ROI on this. I just started to see like returns where I was like, okay, I'm getting better returns in this than I'm even getting like with some crypto stuff. So I think I've hit something. Um, and it was just, it was literally just that, you know, like uh, my wife was still kind of, trying to navigate into a position. I was like, I probably should not leave my job. I didn't feel good about it yet. And so I did that up until last year where I knew like my wife had, you know, landed in what was her dream job. And I was like, go baby, I want you to flourish. I want you to do your thing. And, you know, to the utmost. Um, and Chris and I had already been, you know, partnered up and I was able to kind of take what I had learned, begin to share it uh, and make it kind of ingrained in part of what Chris was doing, learn things from Chris. I think Chris also learned some things from me. So I felt like there was a really healthy exchange and collaboration. It, it didn't feel like really egocentric. It felt like really, um, really like even Steven and like good, like a win-win, like you'd want it to be. Um, and then, yeah, like shortly after just joining on with Chris, you were one of the first, one of the first guys probably on the West coast that I actually helped to, uh, find out oh dude yeah. like for a while i think you were making pretty dang good money flipping ps4s if i'm not mistaken dude, dude yeah um uh, the ps4 era was that was that was fun <laughs> dude the ps4 era was fun now now honestly right it's like i mean and, and and you guys are you guys are you guys know this already right but like sometimes like when you when you're doing other things and you're doing it with reselling right sometimes i like like I look at a PS4, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to pack that. I don't want. I don't want to buy yeah. it. I don't want to pack it. I don't Dude, want to ship it. Right? Thing. <laughs> like the success becomes daunting, right? Because it becomes work. Yeah. But in the beginning, it's excitement because, but then you get used to like making money outside of a job, right? Mm -hmm. And that changes things. And it's it's Truly. an interesting feeling. Um, because I had I think it was uh nine hundred dollars worth of sales the other day, and I was just like, ah. Oh. Like pack all these things up <laughs> you know <laughs> i feel that or you like or like you're you're sourcing and you're like oh man i just got three people in my dms who want to do a deal or i just i just found oh, yeah. Yeah. four items on facebook marketplace that i could literally go pick up right now oh yeah. i guess i'll go make some money daunting, right <laughs> um, but yeah. that's also a good thing too it's like when when the successful thing becomes boring a lot of people stop as I've noticed, you know, we've coached over uh total over 200 people and 
I've seen people get really comfortable with everything. Um, mm-hmm. like, like it's just a normal part of their day now. And then they just kind of plateau. Right. I mean, Jared, I think at, at one point this happened to you around like six grand and you were like six grand in profit. I remember right after you joined rescale, you were like, I can't, I can't break 6,000. Like I can't, I, for some reason I can't do it. And yeah, I was like, I well, that. that's your problem. You keep telling you, yourself, you can't do it, dude. Like, yeah. And then and right then, away, then, and then, you know, and then right away, like that mind shift, that mindset shift, like that's how I hit, you know, that's how I hit my 12K month, right? It's, it's you know, and I still remember that. I still remember that month very fondly, you know, um, and I, I've always come close to it, but I haven't, haven't, it's, it's like, uh, well, you know, it's oh, like there, there's thinking, your problem again, bro. Yeah, I'm just thinking, like, yeah, right? yeah, there's another one, right? But yeah, I, I do remember that. I do remember that. Right? Yeah, it's, I remember I mean, us having a conversation. Businesses. You were, we were on the Zoom, and you were like, I can't get past this. And I'm like, that's the problem, is you keep mm-hmm. saying it. And, yeah. you know, our, so I like, I like to visualize things a lot. I like to, like, things that we say, I like to actually visualize a neural pathway being created. Because that's what happens. That's how habits are created. Right. If you yeah. guys read Atomic Habits, you'll learn that um, there was a guy who literally had read. brain damage. Right. But they realized that he had created habits like before his brain damage that he would just go and do. And even after the brain damage, the neural pathways were still there. And so he would just go do them randomly. And I didn't know why he just did them. Right. And that's kind of mm-hmm. where you, where you want to get to the point with within business, too, is like. Your, your neural pathway is already built. Like you want it to become like a highway in your brain that, you know, it, it's just a normal part of your kind of routine at that point. Um, and you can, you can take that to learning as well. Like I like, I like to view it almost as like, like almost like little electrons that like flow through the highways. Right. That's mm-hmm. just a visualization for me. Um, as I feel like I'm getting better at something, it feels like that highway is widening up for me. Um, and to me, it's a really, I like to really visualize things like that. Um, and it just helps me learn. Right. So, yeah, but, um, I want to go back real quick to Matt, you were really into sports like soccer and things like that. So was Mm I, um, I went to a very small school. So my school had 26 people graduate in the class. Oh, wow. Like I'm talking small, right? Dude. (laughs) (laughs) So, so it's funny, right? I, I recently uh, went to the, our high school graduation, uh, like 10 year reunion, like last year. And uh, something became like super apparent to me there. Like, like number one, like everybody had grown, right? Everybody looked a little bit different. Um, and one thing that one of the guys who who was who was in high school with us who he had a, like a drug problem right he had he had since worked everything out he was working for the military now he was doing well right and he came up to me and he's like dude are you still doing like that that phone hooping thing and i'm like yeah and he's like haven't you been doing that like since you got out of high school and i was like almost yeah and he's like Dude, that's really cool how you can stay with something that long. And I was like, okay, it, it, that's interesting. And and then I kind of told him, I was like, I mean, we're still doing that, but we're also like, we're coaching people because they ask now and stuff like that. And, you know, and then, you know, we got into the financials a little bit. He's like, it was kind of weird because he was like, dude, you're probably the most successful out of all of us. And I was like, I didn't know how to respond to that. Right. right? Like, I didn't want to feel, like, egotistical about it um, or anything like that. Um, But it was interesting. It's interesting to see how people change, right? But it's also, like, if you can stick with something for an extended period of time, you just become known for it. Everybody notices at that point, Mm -hmm. right? Everybody, like, like, from high school that I, you know, meet in person nowadays, they're always asking you know, they're always like, dude, I see your reels all the time. Like you're still, doing <laughs> that. you're still flipping those electronics, you know? And I'm like, I, I just do the same thing every day, man. Like, I'm like, how, like, how is that? How is that possible? You know? But yeah, yeah, exactly. Jared, you know, you just keep going up and up and up and up. 
And it's yeah. just, it's not the fancy plays, right? It like in football, it's, you don't win by doing all the fancy plays because you end up fumbling because there's too many variables, right? Yeah. But like, if you just put two big guys in the front and you run right every time, you know, you make it, you know, two, four yards every single time. Right. Yeah. And that's how you win the game. <laughs> yeah. Matt, Matt calls them base hits, right? You know, you, that's you, right. Yeah. yeah you call yeah. Them base hits. You got, you gotta, you gotta get those base hits, man. Like everybody wants the home runs and the grand slams. Cause that's sexy, but it's like, <laughs> we live, we live our lives in the margin unsexy, right? Like we bookend our weeks with like, you know, what we're going to do with the weekend. Well, what about all the days in between where we could be living awesome, you know, by just being satisfied with like things like, yo, today I got a base hit and that's all I needed. And that's good. Yeah. Like, let me, good job. You know what I mean? Like, bucks. hey, right. 100 bucks today, you know, I'm, that's how it I mean, starts. If yeah. you go and you're just like, all right, I need to make $50 outside of my day job today. Like, that's how it starts. And then it becomes exactly. 60 and then it becomes 80 and then it becomes 100. And like, yeah. I woke up to $300 today, right? right. Like that. I remember, I still remember the first time I ever made money in my sleep flipping phones. Like, yeah. and I woke up to a sale and I was like, holy crap. I just, and like back, back then that was a huge thing, right? Nowadays, it's not so much. A lot of people are making money online today, right? But <laughs> like back 2018, I remember waking up and I was like, I just, I mean, kind of. Right. It was like halfway in my sleep. Right. <laughs> um, like because I had to buy the phone still, but it sold at night. So I considered it making yeah. money in my sleep. <laughs> Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Right on. Um, I was, you know, that was a game changer for me. And I was just like, OK, all right. This is a this is a real thing. So and then, it, you know, it became now that's kind of the norm. Um, and, you know, as you normalize things, one thing I've noticed is as things become normalized, you keep looking for different things to get into, right? And that's been a problem of mine. Like, Matt, you were talking earlier about finding the one thing that you're really good at. I wanted to be good at everything, which is a massive problem for me. <laughs> like, I've had to reel myself back in many times and have mentors help me, like, reel myself back in because I – enjoy learning so much that it actually yeah. throws me off of what I'm good at. Yeah. Um, have I learned a lot? Absolutely. Right. I'm good yeah. at negotiation. I'm good at appraising. I'm good at, I'm good at pretty much the whole reselling thing altogether. Right. Just because I've spent so much time doing each part of it. Yeah. So. But I, I, you know, I think here's, here's something I'd like to say though, in, 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 kind of combination with that is like the thing about learning is i was just talking with a friend on the phone like a week ago and he was saying he remarked how in a conversation with his university president when he was like you know about to graduate college that his university president said you know most people go their lives and they learn up to about age 18 or 22 so high school or college and after that they stop learning and they have you know 20, 25% of their life that they live through, but they got the whole rest of it. And you're going to live the next three quarters of your life based off knowledge of what you knew up to like age 18. Like how many people do you think are walking around out there that are emotionally or mentally or intellectually like have, have limited themselves, even stunted themselves uh, to the capacity of who they could have become or what they could have accomplished or what they could have done just because they, they weren't, self-learners in other words they they didn't learn how to learn which is the goal of education like the point of, you know from a former teacher is i want to teach people to how to feed themselves not to give them fish but to teach them how to reel in you know a, a decent sized fish or occasionally a good large mouth bass right and i know that if i could give them that gift i've actually given them something that the world can never take away right because with that increased knowledge and in the capacity to feed yourself knowledge is unlimited opportunity for growth. Yeah. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Right. And I think that that's the thing that like, maybe to the point that excites me about what you're saying, Chris is like, that's the thing that makes me like excited is like, man, mm. like, I don't, I don't feel limited or bound yeah. by the constriction of these other things. And other people can set boundaries for me, but the skills that I've learned, 
are going to blast those out of the water. Like it's not even going to limit um, where I can go, what I can do, or what I can see. On that note, um, I really like that. Uh, because I've always wanted to be like that. Well, like even in school, like high school, I was well rounded, right? Like that was something they said a lot for some reason. Like we want you to be this well rounded adult, and I was like, all right, cool, that's the goal, right? I'm gonna be well rounded. I'm gonna be good at everything, right? <laughs> um, but Hormozy actually says something. I think it's Hormozy, um, who he says, um, most men die at thirty, but they don't. They're not buried till seventy. And I was like, wow. Okay. So what you said about most people, you know, most people, whenever they turn 18, they never read another book in their entire life. Right. That's wild to me. Um, peaked in high school is the word. Pe- yeah. <laughs> peaked, yeah, exactly. Peaked in high school. Um, but most men die at 30 and aren't buried till 70. And that's kind of wild to me. Um So in, you know, in that, I guess that circumstance, I'm glad that I've learned as much as I have in such a short amount of time. Also, one thing that I've found is that a lot of knowledge can be compressed really fast into a very short amount of time. Um, And that is, so I I call this like knowledge stacking, right? Because certain things that you learn end up being applied into different areas of your life many, many times over, right? For example, whenever I was learning how to be an appointment setter and a salesperson, dude, I was able to bring a lot of that back to reselling. Yeah. Like a lot of it, like, for example, following up, like Jared, how many, you know, how often do I talk about following up? Like every day, right? (laughs) Um, Every time I talk to someone, are you following up? It's like a hashtag under your name, Chris. It really is though. But that's (laughs) as an an appointment setter and a salesperson, you had to, like, that's where the money was. Like it was not the first time you talked to somebody, you didn't make money from them. That never happened. Jared, you went through sales. That never happens. Right. I mean, it might've actually some, actually, (laughs) you know, you did some phone calls where you were so good that you sold them on the first one. Yeah. You're really good. (laughs) Um, But for me, you know, I didn't have that skill. You know, Jared probably had that skill better than me A one call close. I didn't have that. Like I had to follow up with these people. I had to provide value. I had to be nice. And then I had to follow up again. Right. Um, So that I, I brought that back to reselling. Um, the planting the seeds, right? Like that's another appointment setter thing. Like you're planting the seeds to follow up later. That's what reach outs are to me. Like you're just planting the seeds. You're sending a whole lot of DMS in a short amount of time. And then you're following up with these people later. Right. Yeah. Um, that's where the money is at. The money is always, almost always in the follow-up your, your, your margin or your, uh, your numbers will be much better in the follow-ups than they will be in the first contact. So, um, but there, there is something that I do call like knowledge stacking, like you learn something at a, at a specific time and you don't actually use it till like three years later. Like that's happened to me many times. Like for example, I took Billy Jean's marketing course four years ago. I learned indirectly many things from that course. I, I learned that number one, uh, most people have a incredibly short attention span. That's why most of my videos in my courses are less than 10 minutes or even less than five minutes because yeah, people yeah. can follow along with them quickly, find them easily, and they don't yeah, have to yeah. sit through an hour to find one thing, right? Yeah. Because they won't do it if they do. So that was one reason. That was one thing I learned indirectly, and I learned that four years ago and didn't apply it till last year, you know? Um, so there, there's things that you learn along the path, and I, you know, I, I guess it is – at some point though, you do have to specialize. I think like, I think in your, yeah, I heard a quote, um, learn in your twenties, earn in your thirties, right? I'm 29. Um, I put in a, what feels like probably 20 years during my twenties learning wise, like learning many different industries, coaching a lot of people, won my million dollar group award. Like I've done a lot of stuff in my twenties that I just was able to stack and stack and stack and stack. And now as I'm getting closer to 30, my, you know, my back's starting to hurt and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, we're keeping the, we're keeping the muscle and everything going right. Let's go. But 
Um, you're ancient, bro. You're getting ancient. I know. I'm getting ancient. <laughs> I woke up this morning and my back hurt. My heel oh. hurt. I was oh, like, man. what is happening? Like, I know I'm <laughs> close to 30, but like, what? And because I, you know, we work out every day for the most part. Um, yep. Well, we're on 75 hard, so it's twice a day every day. Uh, but <laughs> um, no, that could be a reason. I did Stairmaster for 45 minutes yesterday, so... I wonder um, why my back hurts. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I just wonder why, right? It's probably because of that. Um, but I want to add on one last piece to this because I know we got to wrap up soon. Sports have, I've noticed, have a dramatic – sports and working out in general have a dramatic effect on how how good you are as an entrepreneur. Um, so for example, in high school, I had to play every sport because it was required because we had 26 people in our class. Right. So, so if, if I didn't, if, if we all didn't play, we didn't have a team. <laughs> this is, is how so the game funny. worked. Right. Oh my gosh. The, you know, the, the whole school was the football team, right? All wait, wait, wait. So does that mean you played football, basketball, and baseball like year round? Was that the three? I played football for two years. Uh, I, I didn't play football the last two years just because, um, I didn't, I didn't want to get hurt. Honestly, the first two years I got hurt twice and I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm not going to break myself, you know, and everything else that I want to do. So, but I did do t- football for the first two years. I did baseball. I did, uh, track. I was the long distance runner in track actually, uh, our main one. Um, so like I was the two mile guy, like in high school, I was a long distance oh. runner. Wow, but man. I was up, but I was also like a weightlifter at the same time. It was very interesting. Um, it's one of those things where it was required because if you don't have enough people, you don't have a team, you know. Um, so you you got good at everything. <laughs> uh, tennis, track, baseball, golf. Actually, interestingly enough, um, and whatever else there was. Honestly, tennis. I played one year of tennis, so we played everything. Jesus, um, dude. <laughs> so, that's, but th- that's you know lot. that that actually comes back to like, you know, I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful that I went to a really small school because I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't have been exposed to all of those different sports. Like I played pickleball last time when I went to Arizona. I'd never played pickleball before, but I played tennis. You know, yeah. Me, me and a good buddy of mine. You know, we we cranked it out we came in second but hey we want we you know we did pretty freaking good for the first time playing you know so, so Pr- it, it, Chris, it, I want, go ahead yeah. well, I, I want to ask you then like you got me curious because it's like like as far as like what space in your mind or your heart do you think playing sports then carved out that has served you well now as an entrepreneur and like business owner yeah so uh, the story that comes to my mind really quickly is you play until you can't, right? So in entrepreneurship, that's a real thing. But the cool thing is, is the game doesn't end in entrepreneurship, right? It just keeps going. Um, so we were at the area track meet one year and I was uh, I was the 800 meter runner. And um, uh, so that's two laps around a track, right? Um. I should have won that, but I passed out like 10 feet from the finish line. Right. And I remember like black, that feeling like blacked out, like blacked, blacked out, out straight up okay. blacked out. I was in first okay. place the entire time. I was, I was, I was, I was going for the win no matter what, like, but I blacked out, fell on the track, all of it, the whole thing. It was okay. terrible. Um, still remember blacking out right before I was like, (laughs) when I woke up, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. But I remember the feeling of being so tired and like, like my body had given out and like everything, like I was done, like absolutely done, had nothing to give. And the way that I think that translates to entrepreneurship is you can last a lot longer than your body when it comes to entrepreneurship, like you can outlast, if you can outlast everybody, you'll win. Right. Mm-hmm. Even though I didn't win, I learned a really valuable lesson from that is I learned if, if you can simply just outlast everybody else, mm-hmm. you don't have competition. And it really didn't come back later in my mindset until like I started getting competition with like course creators and course sellers and like people like that. 
right? And services popping up and and things like that. You know, you always got to iterate. And but what I found is if you can last longer than everybody else, you'll just win by default, right? And even though I didn't win, I still gained a very valuable lesson from that. Uh, but I was also a long distance runner, <clears throat> so once again, if you can outlast everybody, you win. Like if you can keep the same pace for long enough time, you'll just win, you know, <laughs> um, which I think is a very valuable lesson. So, if, you know, for me, it's like if I can just work out every day and outlast everybody, I'm going to be in shape no matter what, you know. So and that's just kind of how I apply it to the entrepreneurship stuff. Now it's like, all right, cool. So I just got to do these things every single day, make a video, make some reels send an email. Like if I just do these things every single day, I'll outlast mm-hmm. everybody. And therefore I have no competition. Same thing with flipping. Like if you do your 20 reach outs a day, you respond to your ads, you follow up with your leads, you do these things, yep. you'll just outlast your competition. Do you guys know how long a phone flipper typically lasts in this industry? Less than a year. Usually it's less than three months because they get scammed on eBay and then give up on everything. Right. You guys know how easy it is to win. Like that's how easy it is to win. Yeah. <clears throat> if you can just outlast, then you'll win. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I don't know if that was the answer you wanted, Matt, but that's the one I gave. So. <laughs> no, that that's that's your response, and I think that that is so relative to your story, so relative to the. Uh, well, the the legacy of you know myself and Jared both being privy to opportunities that have been made available to us as a consequence of your enduring spirit, your persistence, and your willingness yeah. to just keep pushing forward. Like, am I going to solve all the problems that I have in my business tomorrow? <laughs> no, but I may solve the next one, and I'm going to keep going from there. I'm going to get another base hit, and I'm going to put yeah. something in play. It may not be perfect. Okay, but uh, a poor plan executed today is better than a perfect plan executed tomorrow. And uh, I think it's it's about, you know, just consistently taking action. And I think it is the, the easiest way to bust all of the fear that most people have surrounding their ability to uh, make money for themselves, to live a life beyond what the world has told them that they can live or that they're capable of live or that even for myself and observing my parents uh, seem to be like, this is the life, you know, that lies ahead of you. It's like, okay, what if it, what if it could be different? And, um, you know, entrepreneurs are just, uh, they're a lot like artists, except, you know, they use, they use money as their medium to paint something fresh and new that the world hasn't seen before. And I think that um, when you get a taste of that, whether it's like Jared, yourself or myself, um, you find, okay, like, I really do think I might have what it takes. I think I want to prove myself wrong, you know, and and bust up this old belief system and um, find, find something fresh, you know, stretch my legs and start to run in a way that maybe I feel like I was always meant to. One thing I want to, before we end here, um, one thing, uh, kind of a mantra that I've set for myself to, to make things okay for everything that I do is break everything and then learn how to fix it. Right. Like that's my kind of a mantra of mine. Um, Like if I can break the system and then learn how to fix it, that's the easiest way to learn it. Like, um, what's that like deconstructing a car and putting it back together? Pretty much. Yeah. For the most part, like for example, whenever, and this is a testament to resale deck and why I know so much about it and how to work it and like how to add to things to it. It's because, uh, so go high level is what it's built off of. Right. So whenever I joined go high level for my marketing agency, Oh, four something years ago, dude, I broke everything in that system. Like the first day I had, I didn't watch any videos, which was, you know, for, for me, that was dumb. Um, but I was like, I had it, I was setting up automations and it was calling people in the middle of the night and all kinds of stuff. Like I didn't know what I was doing, man. Um, (laughs) but that taught me a lot. Like, it was like, okay, but I learned the system. Like, I made a lot of mistakes, yeah. um, but I didn't have anybody to talk to. I didn't have anybody to ask questions um, about it. Like, and I could have, like, I had the options to do that. I just didn't. Um, but, like, nowadays, it's kind of like break everything first, then reconstruct it for me anyway. 
Um, a lot of people don't have that and that's okay. Um, so outside of that though, I just wanted to put that in there. It's like, be okay with messing things up. If you're yeah. not okay with messing things up, then you're going to have a really difficult time learning things. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's Jared, good. Any, any last things you want to add to the end of this? No, man. You know, when you guys were talking about, you know, because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit behind you guys in the terms of like, right, you know, right, you know, you guys are both, you know, you guys have a different outlook of on life right now because you know you guys have your own families at the moment. So it's like it was great for me to to sit here and see things from like a different perspective, you know, because right now it's just me, you know, what I mean, I don't have any, I don't, I don't have a, I don't like realistically in terms of responsibility, it's, it's just me, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, it was it was great, like kind of like just to seeing how things would be different in terms of perspective wise, what yeah. it would look like, you know, especially since right now I'm still trying to figure things out. I'm still trying to like, you know, you're in a good uh, spot, dude. I'm trying, man. No I'm lie. Trying. Like you have you have the options right now to learn as much as you want for as long as you want and to condense as much information as possible in one area yeah. because you don't have as many responsibilities as, as your future self will true right your future self will always have more responsibilities no matter what right yep. i'll tell you right now matt can you know chime in on this when you have kids things change right not only do they change you work 10 times harder than you ever thought that you could real stuff like imagine yeah. yourself in five ten years or whatever you know thinking you got two kids and think like it's it's very interesting i don't know if you felt this matt but it's like a biological switch that happens where it's like okay i'm provider now like that's me has to be done no matter what like there is no choice hmm. at that point anymore right it's either do or don't eat kind of stuff um and yep. you know whenever you got two little boys that say they're hungry you know yeah. um yeah. It, it, it's different um so the cool you're, thing you're about it, space. yeah, and nothing's going to, nothing will ever draw you, draw as much out of you as when you know that um, what you do, what the well-being of other people is hinged upon what you choose to do or not to do. Like you will prove more to yourself in those moments than anything. But there's a, I think there's a part of self for every man that um, realizes, you know, when I get married, like I'm going to. I'm going to serve that woman. I'm going to take care of her. And when we have kids, I'm going to serve those kids. I'm going to take care of them. You know, there's, I think there's a rites of passage there. There's a responsibility to to own that. And if for every kid that's ever grown up and, you know, has had a father that hasn't owned that, they, they have a story and it's probably a broken one. Um, and so like when you, it, at your age right now, dog, like, you have the greatest capacity you'll ever have to fail, learn and recover. Yeah. Like with like, with such a rapid speed. So like my advice to anybody, you know, that is, you know, like Jared sit here and you're like, you know, late teens, 20 something, whatever, you're just kicking around, figuring out, still fairly figuring out stuff, but you've got a few pillars or things kind of foundations and footing set, but you don't know where the rest of the structure is going. Cause you're literally living that out a day at a time. It's like, don't be afraid to to fail forward. Just keep yeah. moving forward. Like take take risk. Take healthy, calculated risk. But you can take bigger risk now than I could. You know, yeah, at, at, I can't take point. calculated. I can't take many risks like I was able to do in the past. Like there's yeah. too many different things now, right? Yeah. So, like, I wouldn't honestly. I and this might sound counterintuitive to a lot of people. I would not invest in the S you know, the, the stock market. I would invest in yourself right now. Like that is where I would put all of the money because mm -hmm. and especially during your 20, how old are you right now? I turned 24 earlier this year. Dude, you got six, hey. you got six years to build skills that will. So I'm going to quote Hormozy here again, right? Skills are the only thing that can't be taxed taken from you or lost in a divorce right they can't and nobody can take them away from you other than death right that's the only thing so that's what you want to focus on because if you build your skills then you know you're set for life for the most part 
like you learn people like some people only learn people skills and they become millionaires right yeah so it and realistically it only takes about 50 grand in total like spending to yeah. gain a million dollars worth of skill sets right i would agree with it's that only, like yeah, for three sure. things you need to learn number one you need to learn how to talk to people you need to learn to market yourself then you need to learn sales you've already got sales and you already got people stuff too from reselling so yeah i would invest as much as possible into your skill sets because that, i mean that's what i did um and i mean i'm doing pretty well so <laughs> um but if you can yeah i mean your your 20s are for learning and your 30s are for earning um and if you can kind of delay the gratification of having a big bank account until you're you know in your 30s you know yeah I mean, I'm not saying don't get married in your 20s or anything either, right? Like, you know, there, there, there's a lot of benefits. hey, she's out there, Jared. <laughs> there's a lot of benefits to getting married early too. I got married 23, and I'm glad I did. And oh, I got married at 22. My bad. Jeez. <laughs> in my 20s, anyway. We were 21. What year? That was awesome. Oh yeah, awesome. eight years. Sorry okay, I'm 29. Too. Yeah. All right. Um. So Fantastic. I'm married I at 21. It. My bad. Um, I, 23 is a big year for me. Like that's where I learned most of my stuff. So I just kind of clump everything together. That's right. That's when Renan was born. Okay. So, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, man, I mean, there, there's benefits to that too. Like having children kind of young, like I'm going to be in, I'm going to be around 40, 42, when my son is it, my first son is 18. Mm. And I really like that because, you know, probably going to have grandkids when I'm in my forties, which Maybe. is cool. You know, um, yeah. if they want them, I want them. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, you know, there's benefits to everything and it's always good to look for the positives and everything too. But while you're here, you know, start manifesting your goals, you know, like start writing them out, start telling yourself that certain things are going to happen and they'll probably start happening. You got to train your unconscious for things to happen. Right. So, but belief is such a powerful thing. Um, Chris. So if somebody wanted to, you know, invest in themselves, like you're saying, and be a part of a starter kit, like Jared was or accelerator or resell deck, like how can they do that? Um. So, We've actually kind of put almost everything into resale deck now. Um, so the resale deck has a starter kit built in uh, into the $97 plan. There's a 14 day trial with that. Um, and then you got the 197 plan, which is uh, kind of like a, like a super basic resellerator package. And then obviously mm -hmm. you can also book a call to work directly with me, Matt, Aaron, and, you know, get direct help kind of like Jared did. Um, but that's, how, you know, that's how everything's working right now. So Outside of that, though, um, I think that's going to wrap up. I know we went a little over. Sorry, Matt. Go have lunch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Chris knows that I take my wife and kids on lunch dates pretty often on Fridays. And guess what, guys? I don't I don't make myself work on Fridays because I, I work for myself now, and you can do that. So Heck Yeah. All right. Well, good. we're going to wrap it up, guys. You guys have a great day. Keep crushing, and I'll uh, see you guys next Friday.